Morning. I think it's still morning. Yeah, 1025. It's morning. So I'm doing this live from home with a gray screen behind me and my cat watching me from the floor. He may join us a little bit later. And it's funny, I, I got a question, actually a couple questions this past week. One was, uh, you have a cat? You don't have a dog? You don't have a bunch of dogs? So that uh, bleeds into the second question that I got, and that's, how did I get started with dog volunteering? And that bleeds into the third question, which was part of the second question, and that is, how did you get so involved? Sorry, I bumped the thing. So this may be a long one. Uh, I'm speaking as an individual. So I have a cat. And if you're interested, you can see the one-man show I did, which predominantly talks about how he actually walked into my life. So I, um, I've never lived in Los Angeles in a place where I was allowed to have a dog. That's part of the reality here when you rent. I lived in one house that I shared that they had two dogs, which is awesome. Love that. Um... But in all my apartments, there's been a no-dog policy. And it was cheap rent, and I made a choice long ago to live a more artist life and not a corporate life and not a um, life dedicated to making money, but more a life dedicated to pursuing my passions. Right or wrong, that's what I made the choice to do. And I continue that. So I'd rather have a cheap apartment that I can volunteer and live my life outside the apartment rather than buy a house and have to worry about um, mortgage payments and having a job that I hated to keep up with the Joneses. That's just my feeling. So this last place, um, my landlord does not allow pets of any, of any kind. So I'm hating my hat on this camera, by the way, and I'm hating my hair because I walked around and went on a hat. I went on a hat. I went on a walk with a big hat. And anyway, I'm just not going to be happy today. Let's do this. There we go. Now I'm happy. Because I look like an idiot. Um, the landlord said, you know, no dogs, no dogs, no dogs, no dogs, no dogs, no dogs. And I think he just got so sick of me saying no dog, um, asking if I could have a dog, that he was like, oh, you know what? You can have a cat. I think he thought there's no way I'll ever get a cat. And that one-man show that I did prior to COVID, which raised ten grand for shelter animals, actually, which is awesome, um, explains it. But he just showed up. Unbelievable. I, I was living with a woman at the time um, who was my girlfriend or significant other. And uh, I won't go into the whole story, but, um, yeah, watch that. It's on my linked tree you can see it it's on youtube i think it's now available for public screenings um if you're just tuning in now i'm just i'm over my hair right now in my hat so um that's that's sort of why i have a cat he walked in he's right here right now he's trying to get the treats i put up here because if i don't have treats when i start filming or auditioning in my apartment he will start yelling here have one um, and he's a very vocal cat. Um, very active. Love him. Best thing in my life. I don't know how people give up cats, honestly. Or dogs, or any animals, quite honestly. Because they're awesome. Anyway, so, I started volunteering. I went on a, wasn't a blind date. I, I had met her at a party. I thought she was great. We went out. Um, I don't know. Didn't seem like she was too into it. And... She started talking about this volunteer work she did. I've told this story before um, at the Amanda Foundation. And so I didn't even know you could volunteer walk dogs. I thought, that's awesome. I could get my dog on and be of service. So I went there, met with the woman who ran it or owned it. Name's Terry. I think she still owns it or runs it or manages it or whatever. What, however, whatever title she has. Here, buddy. Um, met with her. Told her about this woman. She didn't recognize the name, oddly enough. And I started volunteering with her. And I stayed there for a number of years. But then it became hip, and the dogs were going out all the time. And uh, 
Some of them were going out three or four times a day. And then I bumped into a friend of mine at a gym that I was working out at. And I told him I was probably going to stop volunteering there because I didn't see a purpose for me. That's my life is about purpose or try to make it about purpose. That's what gets me up in the morning. So uh, he said, hey, you should volunteer at the city, city of Los Angeles. Our dogs aren't getting up, but six or uh, once every six or eight weeks. And he said, there's only a couple of volunteers and most of them don't like to do big dogs and so I started there, and again, I felt a purpose, and I started there, and I um, saw what was happening with uh, euthanasia and animals um, coming in that were misunderstood. Uh, I posted about one today. His name was Azim, Azul, excuse me. It's just misunderstood. Excellent dog, just in the wrong place. Um, it's a hard place to be. So I just found a passion for it, and uh, I would, uh, besides not chasing money so much, um, not to say that it's not important and that I I don't welcome it into, into my life, but I also believe in you only live once and do what you love and make a difference. Um, oh, why did I go on that tangent? Now I'm lost. Anyway, I hope you can hear me. Um, this cat is right at my feet, and he's picking off little treats on the stool next to me. So I've posted about him before. He's around here. So, oh, he's right under my stool. I'll get him. He's he's hesitating to jump up because he knows I'll put him on camera. You want to come up here? Come up here. Come up. Come up. 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 Jump. There he is. All right. Now he's going to get frustrated because the treats aren't there, but that's Tim. He goes by. His real name is, look over here. Oh, he got a treat. He snagged a treat on the way up. His full name is Timothy Oliver Gabin, Professor of Chaos. And you'll find out why he got most of those names if you watch that one-man show. There he is. There's his eyes. He's great. If he was in a shelter, he'd probably be euthanized because he does not like being combined in a kennel or a bag or crate or anything. And he will make your life miserable, but he is amazing. He's so smart. He's like a dog. I have him trained to sit. When he's not grumpy, he'll walk across my shoulders, but he is very affectionate. Unfortunately, he doesn't get along well with other cats, um, at least in this little apartment. But anyway, so that's that's Timothy Gavin. He's going to eat the treats now. Um, so yeah, I just got more involved because there was more need and more need and... I found that uh, it fed my creativity, the videos, and uh, as I have trouble finding the words, it sort of filled, filled my um, need to be of value to the world. And also it fit my skill set of uh, communication and wanting to do, make a change. I mean, the whole reason I got into acting is that I saw that I had the ability to change people's perceptions and even if I did a commercial that was only 30 seconds long and it made the world smile for a half a second I felt like that was worth it even if it stopped someone from doing something horrible or um, having a bad day I, I felt like it was worthy of my time and my time on this earth as silly as that sounds so um I don't know how to Explain it other than that, I did not go into, I did not move to Los Angeles to volunteer with dogs. I did not start volunteering with dogs to post them on Instagram. I did not start posting them on social media to get them attention. Uh, I did not, um, yeah, I did not start visiting shelters because I wanted to try to improve other shelters. It's just like all building on itself and whether or not I do it, Tomorrow or ever again, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like to um, learn things. I like to help. When I don't feel like I'm being of service, I tend to move on to something else that I feel like I'm being of service. When I don't feel like I'm good at something, I tend to move on if I give it a shot long enough um, to something else. Right now, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm um, trying to raise money. Many of you know. Hopefully, I'm not annoying anybody, but trying to raise money on this GoFundMe. 
which is trying to com- combine the two things. So, like with Kill Her, the movie that's coming out on the 20th, which I hope you all watch, it was great, but we made very little money, everybody, because it's very, you know, it's the way it is. And whether or not we ever make money on it, I don't know. But we had a great time. Um, but at the same time, I was still promoting dogs. And when I got back, I was volunteering with dogs and animals. And I thought, well, why, why don't I go try to combine these two? Try to make an entertaining product that helps that part of my life, but also expands the coverage of the people getting the messaging through an interesting way and expand that part of my life. And I, I've been very fortunate, very fortunate. Some of you may know this and some of you may not. M- many of the dogs that I've featured have gone on to other states and even Canada. Um, I think there's like 15 to 17 different states. And it's not just dogs I post. It's dogs that the team posts. Uh, but I had a, a small or medium or large size uh, hand in that. So like Azul, he's in Colorado. Um, it, it brings joy to my life. Um, when I get a message from someone in Austria who says I motivated them to start volunteering and not only are they saving animals right now and helping animals, but they, the animals are helping them save them from whatever they've gone through. Or I've heard from people all over the country that they started volunteering because they watch my videos or they have improved something or their safety has improved or um, the way they see things has improved. Um, conditions somewhere have improved. I, 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 I've been told a number of places I volunteer that things have gotten better since I started there, which is, I don't know how you can't be addicted to that. So I am addicted to that. I'm addicted to trying to help. Maybe I, I try to help too much sometimes. It does annoy some people. I understand that. And I try to understand where they're coming from. Although it's hard for me sometimes. And some people don't like new ideas or want anything to improve. Which again, I don't understand that. And some people have issues about other people's success. Which is weird to me. But, you know, we're all... We're all messed up little individuals. There was once a, I was in an acting workshop and there was this beautiful model, I don't know, from some um, Slavic country or Russian country or, I don't know, Soviet Union, former Soviet Union country. And she did a monologue about being this stinky green ogre type thing. And that was decades ago. And I realized, you know, no matter what we look on the outside or no matter how much we have it all together from the outside, we're still all flawed inside. And we all, we all burp and fart and put on weight we don't want and feel bloated and make mistakes and get depressed, get angry. So, which, you know, leads me to the animals thing. I've learned more about acting, volunteering with animals than I did in any acting class. I learned more about humanity. I've learned more about people. I've learned about myself. I've learned about being in the moment because there's nothing more real than a dog or any animal. In the, They're always in the moment. Um, or the stakes or drama or any of it. I mean, I, and again, I didn't do it for that. It's just, I love learning. I, the whole reason I got into acting is I love learning and I got into writing and I got into directing and uh, editing and singing and you name it. I, I got into it because I basically want to experience what someone else experienced and learn through the process. So anyway, so I hope that answers the questions that people had, a couple people had, uh, maybe it bored the hell out of everybody. I don't know. I'm at a point where I just... You know, I'll wear my stupid hat like this. I don't care. Um, I enjoy the updates. I enjoy seeing Azul on top of a mountain of 12,000 feet. I enjoy seeing Kill, Killa out in Malibu playing with a cat who was, um, I, I guess she was a day away from euthanasia. euthanasia. 
I enjoy knowing about, um, shoot, Gallagher, who literally was on the table ready to be euthanized. He was being prepped when the rescue came in to get him, um, who I think is still looking for a, a foster or full-time home um, through Giselle's legacy, just pimping my friend Gallagher. I, I enjoy that, and I, I hurt when the dogs don't get out, but you got to keep moving forward because there's another dog. And when I posted yesterday or day before, I don't know, they all blend together, about many of us feel like we're not doing enough. I It's hard because yesterday at Baldwin Park, uh, I took out a number of shepherd types and there were so many more. And I just can't post too many shepherds in one day or everybody blanks out. And they all start to look alike, unfortunately. And But there were shepherds there I'd never met. And I don't know if I'll be able to get to them before their time clicks. And some of them are keyed up. And I'm not sure anyone's going to touch them. Um, but I will. Um, not to say that I'm better or anything, but I'm willing to do the time and work with them. So there's a couple on my list for the next time I go to Baldwin Park. And there's a bunch of dogs on my list for West Valley when I go there next. And so that's it. So I, hopefully that answers the questions. So uh, check out. Oh, I just saw uh, um, PD's mom just joined us. So PD, let me tell you a little bit of PD before I go. I was told by playgroups that Miss Little Pretty Face and PD needed to get out. And when the staff tell you they need to get out, they need to get out. Anyway, I posted about them. Again, so did other people. Posted about Miss Pretty F- Miss Little Pretty Face and Petey and show highlighted them as well as other dogs in the playgroup. And Miss Little Pretty Face got out like a day later. And that's awesome. Very happy. Super happy. I don't know what she's called now. Maybe it's Missy. I don't know. But Petey was still there. And Petey was still there. And I was going to the shelter yesterday at Baldwin Park. And I woke up with dread that Petey wouldn't be there. Which is a reality. And I got there and Petey was still there. And then I had this new idea like, oh, shoot, what if they pull him while I'm here? God, that hurts. So I saw him all morning long. I knew he was going to be in playgroup if he made it till the afternoon. So I knew he'd get out. I went to lunch early and I came back and I saw Petey being walked out of the play area by a woman that didn't volunteer there or work there. And I instantly recognized him and then realized he had a harness on, which is not normal. And I think I screamed, are you adopting PD? I recognized him from like a hundred feet at least. And she said something about yes. And I, I asked if I could come over and say goodbye and take a video and I was so happy and then the worker realized who she had and she got excited another worker another staff member realized and everyone got so happy that Petey got out so great story great story unfortunately another dog which I loved who I loved um, their kennel was empty for the tough reason so we have to celebrate the ones that get out we have to mourn the ones that don't. We have to keep moving forward for the ones that are still in there. And I believe that we have to try to change the conversation and change things and make things better. And again, I'm going to pimp it. The GoFundMe is for the feature film that I'm trying to get forward. One of my neighborhood squirrels just ran by. Sorry. Um, trying to move it forward at least to pre-production to be able to afford someone to do the budgets and someone to draw up contracts and then trying to reach influential people because it's going to take between 300 and 700k to make this film 300 on the cheap cheap 700 on the still cheap but at least doable and and i can take more time not rush through everything not have to do so many jobs um uh, you know, and if there's some celebrity jumped on board and some studio jumped on board, of course it'd be in the millions. But that's not what import- That's not what is important. What's important is doing it quality, telling a n- narrative story that's 
engaging and people want to watch and people want to tell their friends about. And then at the end of it, they say, hey, I never thought of that. I never thought of it like that. Or, you know what, I'm going to the shelter tomorrow. Or I'm going to start volunteering. Or, you know what, let's let's keep this animal. Let's not surrender him. It's not, they're not going to Club Med or some fancy spa when they go to their shelter. It's not a rehoming service. There's real risk. And again, I'm combining what I do with what I'm doing. And I, I hope to make a difference. That's really my goal. Read the GoFundMe. It talks about, I, since a very young age, I wanted to make a difference. So I've gone on way too long. Anyway, please check things out. Um, go to my linked tree. Click on the GoFundMe. Read it. I put another video on there today. Adding to the team. I'm talking to a new person today I'm excited about. We'll see how he wants to fit in. We have a couple people who are already on as consultants unofficially because we don't have any paperwork, because we don't have a lawyer to draw paperwork. Um, but that's happening. Um, working on that, moving forward, doing it right, building it strong. I learned a lot in every single project I've done to this point. Plus, Killer, I learned a ton. Uh, comes out October 20th. I hope you all see it. hope you all buy the pre-sales um, the week ahead. That'll help launch it. But we have like 11 days of Halloween. So I hope everyone's psyched about watching it because we have to get the word out fast before we lose that window. That's it. If you have questions, I will try to answer them. Stephanie says, what's the film? I missed that part. So the film I made with other people, with many other people, all we all made it, is called Kill Her, K-I-L-L-H-E-R. Again, go to the link tree. Um... You can see a trailer of it. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Really fun movie. I, I don't just, I don't lie. Just so you know. Um, the movie I'm setting up, the working title is called For Mr. Goo. For, F-O-R, Mr. M-R, Goo, G-O-O. The title is in respect for a dog named Mr. Goo who did not make it out of the shelter. And you can read about that. And um, I just posted about him today. But again, Linktree. Um, but the story is not his actual story. But I promised Mr. Goo, after he was euthanized, that he would make a difference. That um, at some point, I, I would make a difference. And I've been trying and trying and trying. And if anyone follows me, you know I try, I try, I try, I try. And so many of us do. Not just me. So many of us. And so many are on board already. But I got to get outside the bubble. Uh, outside my bubble, outside the rescue bubble, outside the couple people that pass on. Like, we need to get outside because I got to keep talking. For every 10 dogs that come in, it's like two go out, or so it feels, or so it literally heard one morning on the radio. 10 calls on the radio for different animals coming in and only two calls for people wanting to see a particular animal. So I guarantee at least 10 came in because some of those might be doubles and maybe two went out. So we have to make a difference. We have to make a difference. If we don't make a difference, it continues. And I'm not one of those people that just continues. I'm not a status quo person. If I see something that I can improve, I will do my best. I will. I just wrote a letter for someone last night, actually, that I think needs rec recommendation. And I'm just not a, I'm a justice person. I can't help it. Anyway, man, I'm all about, like, how flawed I am today. Fuck it. My glasses look crooked. Let's make them crooked. Anyway. <sighs> Getting old. It's tough. Anyway, thanks, everybody. I appreciate you all. Thank you. And just know that there are so many other people that work so hard and they're not as vocal as me and they're not on their TikToks or Facebooks or Instagrams or whatever the frick I'm on. Uh, we just have to use our skills and we have to fight to change things that aren't right. Look at that. I just made a rhyme. Bye, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>